I spent 16 days in the city of Awasa, which by Ethiopian standards is very green and pleasant. I spent most of my time filming wildlife along the shore of the lake of the same name. What now follows is my day-by-day -day video diary. Because large numbers of people walk up and down the lake shore all day using the path, the wildlife tends to be tame and very approachable. It's used to seeing people. You can also take a boat out to see the hippos and other wildlife. Hi. Hi. Even wedding parties enjoy the lake shore. This African jacana was so laid back about me looming up so close to her that she was happy just to sit there preening. Jacanas are also known as lily trotters, and you can see why. The long, splayed out feet spread the bird's weight to such an extent that each lily pad only dips slightly beneath the load. The black quake occupies the same habitat as the jacana, but is only half the size. It also has large feet and can move much faster over the lily pads. This shot gives an idea of the size of a jacana compared with a pair of Egyptian geese. Trying to film a male red-chested sunbird catching insects using a handheld camera with a telephoto lens proved to be extremely tricky. Along the lake shore from my hotel was the Amora Ghetto Park with some large old fig trees and plenty of birds and other wildlife. The resident silvery-cheeked hornbills spent a lot of their time in the fig trees. This one seems to be thinking about re-excavating an old nest hole. The hornbills also spent time on the ground looking for food. The most popular animal with local people was the resident population of eastern black and white colobus monkeys. An alternative, and much shorter name and more convenient, is the Goraisa. Like any monkeys, Juvenile goraces spend a lot of time playing. Unfortunately, the local people are more interested in getting selfies with the monkeys than in watching their natural behaviour. While I was filming the monkeys, I spotted a couple of hornbills basking in a tree high above me. Look at the way it lays its head back over its wings. Its mate was also quite involved with it. It was often a Hadada ibis with its lovely green iridescence poking around for food. Up in the treetops, the hornbills had swapped branches and were engaging in some fairly frenetic interactions. Down below them, 
This Gracer really wasn't interested. Over the next few days, I added a few new birds. This is a typically busy flock of tiny bronze mannequins. This was the only marabou stork I saw with its chicks in a nest high up in a tree. More often, you had to wend your way amongst the marabous, hanging around the town looking for food handouts near the restaurants. The largest numbers were found on the lakeshore promenade. Here people feed them in order to get selfies, standing next to what must be one of the world's most grotesquely ugly birds. The males are particularly grotesque, with this huge pink pouch hanging down. Presumably the females find this very attractive. This one is gathering nesting material. Then once in flight, it stops being ugly and becomes quite elegant. And now we go from the beast to the beauty. In the low evening light, the Malachite kingfishers come to the lake shore to catch fish. This is one of the world's smallest kingfishers. <laughs> Most mornings I would spend a few hours filming birds in front of my room in the Circle of Life Hotel. There's my tripod set up ready. On most days, a pair of very tame Ripple's Robin Chats would show up. On a couple of occasions, I was fortunate to capture their display song. These were actually filmed over about a week, but I've put them together for convenience. Every couple of days, the local group of vervet monkeys would raid the hotel looking for food. Every evening, the sunset over the lake would vary according to weather conditions. Early next morning, the hammercocks were noisily active. <laughs> Meanwhile, down on the lake, the long-tailed cormorants were busy fishing. <laughs> While this yellow wagtail was looking for insects on the floating mats of papyrus stems. Although this woodland kingfisher is perched beside the lake, this species is more common in woodland or savannah or even in gardens where it feeds on insects rather than fish. The tiny malachite kingfisher does eat fish and I spent a lot of time trying to film one swallowing a fish, but by the evening on this day I still hadn't managed it. Early next morning, before the restaurant of my hotel was open, the vervet monkeys launched a raid. Later that afternoon, I just couldn't resist getting some more video of the beautiful Malachite kingfishers. And I finally hit the jackpot. 
and managed to get one swallowing of fish. It's still wet after diving into the water to catch the fish, so its next job is to shake itself dry. Just a few minutes later, a second one turned up, which I presume was a male. With its spectacular long tail though, this is definitely a male, with a paradise flycatcher. See how he fans out his tail when he spots a nearby female. While I was filming the flycatchers, I spotted this olive thrush preening on the ground down below. Given that it's mainly brown, the name is rather inappropriate. Back at the lake, this malachite was shaking itself after making an unsuccessful dive, but then its next attempt was successful. And now it's back to the search for another meal. After several dives, simply shaking the water off the feathers doesn't do a good enough job. It then becomes necessary to engage in a session of lengthy preening. Later that evening, the presumed male turned up again and they sat side by side, peering down into the water, looking for fish. Then the presumed female got fed up with her companion and sent him packing. Next day I hit the jackpot again. I managed to film two instances of fish being swallowed. This one is particularly nice. Later on, the second bird turned up, but flew off before things got rough. Next morning, the black crate turned up again. This time it sat preening right in front of me, displaying its beautiful red legs and feet. The people sitting at the restaurant tables, just behind me, must have been wondering what on earth I was doing. Here, I don't know if it's looking for food or trying to gather some nesting material. Back in the hotel garden, an Ethiopian boo-boo briefly turned up. And so did the male paradise flycatcher. In his haste to snap up an insect off a nearby leaf, he almost brushed my face with his wings. On my last day in the Amora Gedel Park, I managed to film the Gorosas with their babies. Here we can see a couple of very young babies playing. These are rather older, but still very playful. And so, on my final evening at Nawasa, it was past the boat dock and back to my hotel. <laughs>